If you're a spiritual entrepreneur, I know you want to often avoid the topic of sales and marketing. Why? We've all been in the situation where people are trying to sell us something that we don't want to buy. And we simply don't want that energy. We don't want that for our audience. We don't want to put that out there for people to be pushy or salesy. However, in business, if you're online growing a business, following your heart's calling, and that requires making income, that income is the life force. That's the blood of your business. So the question is, how do you navigate that? How do you navigate doing your sales and marketing in a way that feels aligned? And do you have doubts? Do you have doubts that you have the knowledge and the steps necessary to make it successful? Well, these were the questions that were posed to me and the group in the little bonus group coaching call that I ran after the weekly collaborative call for the serving circle. So what we're gonna really focus on here and what you're gonna learn is one, how to really energetically attract what it is you want. Two, what do you do when the doubts do come up around sales and marketing? And three, in your sales and marketing, what do you focus on most that's gonna help you get that return on your investment? So yes, it's here, of course, and in the serving circle on Facebook, where you help elevate the consciousness of the planet through the success of your spiritual business. So if you are a spiritual entrepreneur, be sure to subscribe, support the content. I'll see you on Facebook in the serving circle where you can start collaborating with your soul tribe. Let's dive in. So I like to uh, just do some of these bonus chats, not only to answer some questions, but to also get some of your expertise as well. Maybe you've done some things that work. Maybe you've done some things that don't work or any ideas that you want to share that you think might be really cool. So I know if you have been in business for a while or you have some expertise with some things that I don't. And uh, I just love having these general chats because we're all sort of in the same situation of building something online, getting some engagement, putting out some offers, whether it be a free offer or whether it be a, a paid offer for people to become clients or a freebie or something like that. And we have these consistent questions of one, how do I get more engagement? How do I get more eyeballs and more reach out of that reach? How do I get more leads for people who are just interested in my stuff and signing up for my offers? And then how out of those leads, how, how many people are converting into paying clients so that you can serve them, you can help them get from A to B in a more direct and more helpful way, and how those sort of questions um, can be answered more resourcefully. So does that resonate with you guys? That's something you're working on? Cool. Well, before we, uh, I think if you guys just take a couple of minutes to come up with some questions. If you do have any specific questions relating to you, your business, the way that you're doing your content, the way that you're doing your marketing, feel free to, um, to come up with a question. Or if you do have something you want to ask me, uh, make sure you write it down or, or get ready to get ready to ask it. But before we do so, let's just take a couple moments to breathe. Because as you guys know, this is more of an energetic emotional spiritual journey than anything so i'll give you guys a chance just to breathe deep and see what comes up for you around the topics of marketing business sales creating offers building a program what's the overall energy what's the overall emotion that you're bringing to this challenge what's the overall emotion that you're feeling when you're working on your business so if you take a deep breath for breath right now and just breathe deep and sort of pay attention to what patterns are coming up, let's see what's there. If I was to ask you, what's the majority, what's the predominant emotion that you're feeling when you're working on your business, what might that be? May there be some emotions that you're trying to avoid by working on your business. Maybe you're trying to avoid the feelings of failure or judgment or sadness or not being enough for all these different things. So just have a quick intuitive 
scan of your body and your energy field, what comes up for you. So if you guys would like to type in the chat, what's one or two emotions or some things that you notice when you're working on your business, when you're doing your content, when you're about to create an offer or put out your offer, what are some of the majority of the emotions that you're feeling along that journey as you do so? So let's type that in the chat and see what comes up and see, uh, see what we can work on. So Amy says frustration, very key one, very common. Chris is asking, what are the next steps after the creativity? What are you, what are you asking there, Chris? You know how, when you dream up of a program and you go to market it and all of a sudden you don't know marketing enough to say, what's my next step? Oh, cool, cool, cool. So you've come up with an idea and you're not sure how to uh, implement that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, let's talk about that. Cool. So we say some emotions, rejection, fear and excitement. Isn't this almost the same? Yes, I would say so. Time pressure, confidence level, fear of success, overwhelmed change of energy, having to spend time on computer, overwhelm awesome now everything that you're feeling right now that what i see in terms of challenges isn't what's coming up what i see as a challenge is whether you're resisting it or not so let's get a let's get a gauge you can even just ask yourself this intuitively but on a scale of one to ten ten being full resistance zero being no resistance at all at what gauge, where are you at on the resistance scale to these emotions? So if you notice an emotion and you think, holy shit, this shouldn't be here. Can't believe I'm feeling this again. I thought I'd worked through this. I'd be better if I was feeling something else. I need to get rid of it. Is there resistance to the emotion? Like, for example, frustration. Are you frustrated the fact you're frustrated? Do you think the frustration shouldn't be there? Do you think, oh my God, I need to solve this problem of frustration and you're trying to get rid of it? These are the questions we can ask ourselves around the patterns coming up. Now, I know a lot of you study my stuff and listen to the podcast and do all these different things with my content, but one subtle reminder is that the more you feel fully an emotion, whether it be frustration, anger, fear, doubt, concern, the more the pattern comes up, the more the emotion comes up and the more you hold it without resistance, without judgment, that pattern just does whatever it needs to and it starts to flow through you. It's coming up because it's coming out. It's coming up because it's ready to be seen. It's ready to be processed and it will leave in its own time. Not because you're trying to make it leave, but because you're holding a loving safe space for it. It does whatever it needs to Therefore, your soul gets to expand from that contrast, that experience, that felt emotion, and it will flow, it will flow through you in its own time. Now, the reason why that's a bit, that's beneficial, because the more we resist emotion and push them down unconsciously, what do you think that's going to do to the energy? For example, if you have a pattern that says, I need to succeed to feel enough, or I need to make money to feel safe. They're generally some common ones. What do you think your audience is going to feel in your marketing and when you're creating offers? They energetically feel there's this neediness, there's this desperation, there's this, there's this energy that says, I need that money for me to feel something. I need your engagement for me to feel something about myself. And what life is teaching you is that's not true. Who and what you are, your safety, your significance, your love, your ability to feel abundant and joy is not determined upon that external circumstance. So therefore, if you feel into this, you can see that it's not in your highest interest. It's not in your highest to receive something that meets that pattern. It's, you may be at a point where life, it's not your, it's not in your highest for life to give you the money that is your safety. Who's following? We're all following. 
it's now it'll be in your highest for you to purge and heal the pattern that thinks I need money to be safe. So therefore you feel divinely safe, whether you have, you know, a million dollars in the bank, a hundred thousand dollars in the bank or one dollar in the bank and you feel divinely safe. That's when you may be safe to receive it. I'll go on a bit of analogy I use is the uh, child with the ice cream. So if you ask a five-year-old, hey, what do you want? They say ice cream. Okay, what do you want for breakfast? Ice cream. And then they have ice cream for breakfast. Then they're like, what do you want for lunch? Chocolate ice cream with sprinkles. I'll mix it up. Now you can see from the adult's point of view, they know exactly what they want. The question is, is it what they need? You can see from a, a higher level of vibration or a consciousness or a deeper level of awareness, that's not in their highest. Now, what if you, in your this spiritual journey and having this temporary human experience, you're like, what I want is this money, this amount of income, this amount of clients, this amount of Instagram followers. I want my mom to think this about me, whatever comes up. Like, that's what I want. So let's go meditate so I can achieve those things. But what if you're trying to achieve those things from an energy that you're trying to also purge? What if a five-year-old went to meditate every day and it's like, I'm just not getting the ice cream every, every meal. So I need to do more meditation. I'll probably, in, I'll probably do more yoga. I'll probably uh, read some things in Sanskrit and then also um, do some, some Bible verses. I'll increase my meditation to, you know, 14 hours a day. And then the universe can finally welcome me with the ice cream every meal. It's kind of, there's kind of some deeper things that need to be asked here, right? And that's what the business journey is all about. What the business journey is, it presents you with what you're ready to heal what you're ready to heal in yourself, whether you have fears, whether you have attachments to outcomes, whether you have judgments about the world, where you're in resistance to life and says, hey, there's something to look at here. So can we all feel there's some things that as we take our leaps, there's some things here that we need to heal, there's some things we need to see within ourselves, there's some judgments, fears, attachments that we can notice. Who notices? I certainly do. It's all part of the beautiful journey. So is, does anyone have any questions before we move on to Chris? Does anyone have any questions about that process or trying to uncover certain things? Any questions come up? Feel free to show your hand or anything. Makes sense. We're all good. So broken some things up in you to sort of get you thinking. Awesome. So that's what I would pay attention first is what energy are you bringing this challenge? Is this, are there some things to see in yourself? If so, sit with it, hold space for it, send it love, go through the deep healing process. If you need the process in the welcome pack of the serving circle, there's the spirit in business course. It walks you through the steps of how to do this. So you guys are in the serving circle. So you have access to that complimentary course. It'll walk you through the steps how to process everything and how to recognize these patterns. Let's go to Chris and Chris's question. So what are the next steps after the creativity? So if you have creativity, if you have uh, certain things in your mind, certain things that you want to create in the world, the question is what's next? So Chris, do you want to give us um, indication on where you're at with that specific uh, specific questions on what you've come up with or what you're feeling the next steps are well when i was at maui i got this understanding of what i needed to do and start helping people get it more in touch with themselves on a spiritual path instead of just doing the talk it's doing the talk and the walk so I'm like, okay, four-week course. It came up with four weeks. Came up the tie line in the subjects, 
but I always get stuck for me. And I've always been told, Chris, you've got to understand Sam. And I'm like, I don't know a Sam. And they said, yes, that's part of the problem because it's sales and marketing. So I didn't realize that that's what most people refer to as sales and marketing with Sam. And so it's knowing what you don't know and you're trying to be competitive or you're trying to get the message out there. And when you put it out there, you're not sure if your content's okay. It's, it's all those doubts. I think it's, it's the doubts that really, really comes up for me that like, oh, I know it's good enough. I know it's meant to be, but what if? What's Beautiful. next? Beautiful. So as your heart guides you to something new, as your heart pulls you to your next leap, there's a couple of things we can recognize. One, it's going to be unknown. Your heart never guides you to what's known. Your heart will always guide you to what's unknown. And two, there's going to be some stuff coming up, right? So what? So think about what your next leap is. Your next leap might be, hey, I need to put out this offer. Or I need to create this program. Or I need to connect with this person. Or I need to get on this podcast. I need to start this podcast. I need to, whatever your heart's guiding you to, that one feels exciting and two feels scary to your mind. And then think about in order to take this leap while I'm taking this leap, what's coming up in me around what does my mind fear most? We can leave it at that. What does my mind fear most? Whether it be failure, rejection, judgments of other people, holy shit, I'm going to go broke. Oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not good enough. All these things. This is why your heart's guiding you to this leap is to show in you what you're now ready to see and heal. That makes sense. But it's still, the, when you get those ass puckering moments, Tyson, mm -hmm. and it's just before you get the message completely and you're, you're now getting this in, in a vision in your dreams, and then you wake up at three o'clock in the morning and you start writing things down. And then you're like, oh, did I forget something? Did I did I miss something? Did I get the whole message? So you start doubting yourself. And, and yeah, it's cool. in that doubt that there that's where the confusion comes up with. Cool. So what so what you can do is say, okay, give my, let's give myself permission to feel doubt. What if I do miss something? If I do miss something, what will I feel? Will I feel like I'm not enough or I feel like it's it's wrong and I made a mistake? Right. And even giving yourself permission to feel confused. So giving yourself permission to feel doubt, giving yourself permission to feel confused and holding a loving safe space for this inner five-year-old that says, if I make a mistake, this is going to happen. So what comes up there? Ooh, well, it's, I don't, I don't doubt that it'll work. I just doubt my ability to make it marketable. I mm -hmm. think is, is where the doubt is to cool. make it marketable so that it will attract the people and get the message out to who they are. So it's, that's where I have the doubt. Okay, cool. So if you have this awesome idea, it's a four week program, is it? It's a four week program. Yes. Four week program. It, it's being fleshed out in your dreams and you're waking up and you're like this frantic, just getting all the ideas down. You've, you've, you've fleshed out the topics and everything like that. And then something goes up on your mind saying, what if this is an incredible idea? What if this is going to, if this can help transform people, but I don't have the marketing expertise, I can't market it right. So therefore no one will do it. Is that what's coming up? It, it is it, because it's like, okay, I, I take leaps of faith all the time and I trust my intuition and I trust when I get a message from from the universe to, to follow through with it. But then it's like, do I know enough? Do I understand sales and marketing enough mm -hmm. to be able to make this the most amazing program possible? Yeah. And my question would be, what if you don't? I'm okay with that to a point, but mm -hmm. then I'm not okay with that because it's not that I'm a failure. It's just, I'm that competitive person. It's like, what can I, I'm always analyzing like what could I've done what could I do better what how could I change things to make it easier for myself mm -hmm. more understandable for myself because I feel that if if I don't succeed it's somewhere inside of me that I didn't connect 
Okay. So it's not that I look at anybody else. I always go within and find, say, okay, what do I need to do? Okay. How do I need to fix this? I start asking me my, the who's, the what's, the why's, the how's. Yeah. Okay. So I see multiple sides of, multiple sides of Chris right now. Mm -hmm. There are multiple sides. There's the one that says, Hey, I know I'm being guided. I know I'm being guided to exactly where I need to be and exactly what I need to learn, exactly the opportunities. I also see another side, this inner five-year-old who may have believed that I need to succeed or, or, you know, win to be enough. And therefore that competitive side is also the side of you. That's like, holy shit. What if I don't know enough? Or what if I make a mistake? Can you see, can you feel energetically some different, different sides of you showing up? I, I, it is. And because the fact is, is normally I don't question anything. I just step forward. But when it comes to sales and marketing, that's one of my weakest sides of me. Mm -hmm. So it is when, when I don't know enough and I, I took a marketing code uh, course, but when you don't even know what ports are or different things or how to create stuff and, and you're just throwing stuff at the wind and hoping whatever sticks is the right thing. I don't like being in that uncomfortable position. Cool. I would rather like to know that I can trust myself enough to be able to step up, step out and step through that threshold. Okay, great. Um, so one thing I should mention, I'm not necessarily reading all of the chats. Um, so if you mentioned something in particular, then, um, then I might have missed that. But uh, with, with you here, Chris, when we take our leap forward, there are going to be multiple sides of us showing up. And this is how we know who and what we are is not this pattern because there are multiple patterns here. The side of you who deeply knows that there's, there's some, uh, that you're going to be guided where you need to be that takes these leaps of faith. Then there's this, this side of you that freaks out a bit that says, what if I'm not good enough? What if I don't know enough? And so holding space for that side of you who's freaking out is where all the healing is right all of the healing is in this is in holding that energy giving yourself permission to feel confused giving yourself permission to not know something and giving yourself permission to have to hold those vibrations in your body so i'll give everyone a bit of a reminder that when you hold this energy in your body like if you have tension in your shoulders or, or tightness in your chest or emptiness in your stomach and you hold space for that and you welcome it in what you're doing is you're basically providing that five-year-old with the unconditional love that they desperately need right you're holding mm -hmm. you're, you're giving love to that inner five-year-old who believes i need to achieve to feel enough or i need money to feel safe or i need to be seen in this way to make sure that I feel, I feel loved or whatever it may be. Now, I, I agree with that, uh, Tyson. It, it, it's resonating with me right now, but I was a competitive swimmer. So that's how I got through life. And so that's where I get my competitiveness mm -hmm. for it's, but it's, I, I was a swimmer, so I had to compete my own times. I didn't, it wasn't a matter of beating somebody else. It was beating myself. Cool. And I think in, in me, that's, that's where that, that conflict is. Cool. Awesome. Well, here's the thing also, that's still a side of you who believes that winning or being or consistently um, improving means something about you. And, and it is true. These patterns allow us to progress, allow us to grow, right? They've done everything that they were meant to do. And yet life also has another level for you that says who and what you are is not this outcome, right? Who and what you are energetically, spiritually is not your marketing efforts. It's not how the, this launch is going to go. Who and what you are is so much more than that. Now, as that side of you flows through, I believe that'll do more for your marketing as a byproduct than any other, than any particular copy or strategy. Right. So the byproduct of, of healing this in a pattern that says, Oh, I don't energetically, emotionally or spiritually need to be attached to this outcome. It doesn't mean anything about me. That will allow the resourcefulness necessary, whether it be unconditional love for yourself, 
creativity, playfulness, fun, determination, patience, whatever internal resources are needed for this, the success of this launch. It's not necessarily going to come now from the achiever. It's going to come from another side of you, especially if the achiever pattern is overdeveloped. Mm -hmm. Right. Who, who else here from a show of hands? And I'll get to you in a second, Deb, as well. Uh, who from a show of hands here has ever noticed that that achiever side of you running the show? Anyone been there? <laughs> Now it's funny when we're, when it's overdeveloped, it can help us grow as a child, help us grow through our life and, and let us know that, Hey, we're not the victim of life. Who and what we are is so much more than the victim. We can actually achieve and, and create from ourselves the life that we want. And then life says, Hey, if now that level of consciousness has been reached, let's go to a different, a, a deeper level of consciousness more heightened level of consciousness where who and what we are is not what we achieve now, right? But it's also now what we receive. It's sort of becoming from the achiever to the receiver. It's like who and what I am is not what I achieve. Who and what I am is what I receive. It's what flows through me, right? I'm now the channel of what flows through me. Now, can you imagine if who and what you are is more flowing through you in terms of your energy, in terms of your creativity or fun or playfulness? How much more can you, how much more could your clients benefit? How much more can your audience benefit? How much more resourceful can you be in your content? How much more resourceful can you be in creating programs for people? And what if you're just so goddamn excited about it, it does the selling for you. What are your thoughts, Chris? Well, I love what you're saying because it's exactly what I just did on my journey. I got a, I got this whole thing. And then I was told, you've got to go to all the chakras, the physical chakras of the planet. And I didn't question it. I didn't doubt it. I just stayed in the energy and went to Maui, spent five days in Maui doing everything, saw the entire island, spent time with the natives, drummed, did light language, did everything I needed to do. And it was successful. But then I get uh, coming back in the 18 hours, coming back, trying to sleep, but I did a lot of meditation and that's where I got this program. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh shit, now what? Mm. Because I had that, I had that disconnect and it was like, I was out of my comfort zone even more so. And I didn't have that guidance. I didn't have that knowledge, I think for me. And it of course brought me back to that. Okay. What do I, what do I do next? How mm. do I go next? Awesome. Beautiful. So there are some things here to feel as we make that next leap. So consistent questions. Okay, what do I do next? Now, if you're operating from the energy of what do I do? For me, that energy can always can come from a place of safety it says I need to know what I'm doing next to feel safe. Mm -hmm. Right? Like when you didn't have the energy of what do I need to do next and then come from a place of safety and be like, maybe I should just go to all the shockers of the world. <laughs> didn't necessarily come through like that. Right? No, it was just a knowing I, yes. there was no question. It was just knowing that this is something mm -hmm. I'm being told I need to do. Mm -hmm. This is the purpose. This is the mission. Beautiful. Now the question I always ask is what feels most expansive? Meaning to take this leap, what feels like I need to break away some stories and old patterns that are no longer serving me and welcome in more of whom what I really am embody deeper levels of truth. Right? So it might be truth around. I'm always being guided to where I need to be. I always, you know, I can always operate from unconditional love. I have, uh, I have everything that I need and truly desire right now, or we are all one whatever, whatever deep level of truth you're being called to embody, um, mm -hmm. taking the leaps that feel most expansive will allow you to embody more truths and also get rid of, um, some patterns that are no longer serving you. That's what I mean when I say expansive. Mm -hmm. So it may feel expansive to sit with confusion or it might feel expansive to sit with, I don't know what to do next. 
something like that. that. But that's a different question. I don't know to, to be able to say, I don't know. If you notice, I said, what's next? Not, I don't know what to do next. Mm -hmm. And that just, just kind of hit me like a brick wall. It was like that core of me, instead of saying what's next, it's, I don't know what to do next. Okay. That's gotcha. Different. That's the, it's the question that you ask yourself, I think. Gotcha. Cool. Cause then once you focus on your inner healing, you focus on what feels in your expansion. So, oh man, it'd be, it'd be so cool to do this. Or it'd be so expensive to do this. All of a sudden you then, you can then ask yourself some more business questions. You can then ask yourself some more questions around your niche, around uh, what your audience needs, around how to communicate it in a way that's clear and compelling, and then to create an offer that's a no-brainer, to create an offer that's irresistible for someone um, to, be, to be on board with it, right? So then you can ask yourself those, those questions as well. Before we do, Deb King, you have your hand raised. Anything you wanted to add, ask, what's going on? Oh, yeah, I'm loving your approach, Tyson, in terms of really connecting with feelings and making it all okay and, and um, emotions. I just wanted to reflect to to you, Chris, that even though I don't know you that well yet, so I'm very excited to connect further. Um, the fact that you have this superpower to be guided into the unknown, to do all the amazing work you've already done, to go to all the chakras, it's like you have that superpower to just ask what's the next step in tune in for your inner guidance you have all the answers. With marketing, I've never heard of Sam and I did a marketing degree and done lots of different styles of marketing programs. And so I would challenge you to say, you already have everything you need. With respect to marketing, we've entered a new era. Anything that worked in the past doesn't mean it works now. Mm -hmm. Everyone's just guessing and experimenting. Some stuff will land, some stuff won't. It's not about knowing for sure anything. So to just have fun with it and play because you actually have everything you need. You're amazing. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> I'm sorry I have to go, but thank you, Tyson. I'm really delighted to be here and thank you, everyone. And mwah, mwah, mwah. thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, Deb. Yeah, what um, it's so true that as marketing evolves, uh, it's almost like for, for marketing in and of itself, for engagement and community or, you know, for it to work, it needs to be different, right? It needs to be different. Therefore, you can't necessarily follow a particular tactical or strategy of the past because nowadays everyone's running, you know, certain workshops or certain um, webinars and these sort of things. And so it's no longer, it's no longer perceived as a value add anymore. It's seen as a marketing funnel, right? Can you guys feel this? If you say, hey, yeah. I'd, lo I'd love to invite you to my, to my webinar, it's on Saturday between this and this. People know it's, it's basically, it's, it's like a sales pitch. You're inviting someone to a sales pitch. Um, it didn't used to be like that. People would be like, oh man, a webinar. Awesome. How do I jump on a webinar? That'd be cool. It sounds like fun. Sounds like a movie. Sounds like a free movie. Um, but it's, it's not like that anymore. It's, and so we really, as we become resourceful, do our inner healing and ask ourselves the resourceful questions of what's expansive and what my audience needs, it might be different from what's happened in the past and what some marketing experts are saying. No one told me to start a community. No one told me to grow a community. No one told me um, to do collaborative calls. But out of my six hour meditation of just purging so many things around money and fears and uncertainty, I just had the insight that said, hey, if you build a community and you just fall in love with serving, then everyone else will take care of itself. Everything else take care of itself in terms of income and clients and opportunities and collaborations, and you'll get exactly what you need which isn't always what your mind wants, but you'll always get what you need. And so that's just what I trusted. And I left my job, been doing this full time for over two years now. And it's just, I just follow that. So it seems like Chris, that's exactly what you're doing. You're following this and ask yourself those questions. But I, from what I feel is that because of your passion, uh, you'll be able to ask yourself resourceful questions of what your audience needs and how to, how to market it in a way that's fun for you and also expansive for them. 
So whether you um, whether you have your particular uh, messaging and having some real key messaging things in terms of who it is, the problems that you're solving, the outcomes and transformations you're helping them achieve, and then putting some real things in there around why is this vehicle or this method methodology, why is it so important they know this? Why is this the best option for them? Communicating that from your heart. And then putting something together that is expansive, fun, maybe meeting their needs in ways that no one else is, and um, and and generating that type of engagement. So what would you feel I, there? I, yeah, that, that's amazing because, Tyson, when I was in Maui, I took a well ride and I told the naturalist, I said, wouldn't it be nice if at some point a well swam right past the boat? 20 minutes later, a well swam right even with the boat. Everybody's like, what's that blue light blue thing in the water? And she goes, oh, that's a well. And she turned around and looked at me. I said, yeah. I, and she goes, you manifested that. I was like, yeah, I did. Wouldn't it be nice? But when it comes to, um, I guess, for me to put things out, but to help people, wouldn't it be nice? And I didn't think of that question until just now when we were talking about it and that moment that I had in Maui, wouldn't it be nice? Mm. Tyson, may I say something? Go for it. First of all, Chris, you're so magnificent and Tyson, so are you. <clears throat> it's just such an honor to be here in this space. At this time of our evolution, the thing that comes up for me, Chris, to say that along the lines of what um, the gal whose last name is King said, and Tyson, certainly what you're doing with, with this conversation, is that because you are so connected and because you are so uh, congruent in terms of being clear about you are here to serve, you recognize your power to connect with the spirit world and your intuition. What might give you a little more feeling of a kind of stability for you to consider is to think about a particular scenario, a favorite quote unquote client, a single focus, a single personality, a single problem that you solve, just as Tyson said, and is, is common in the marketing world, just one thing so that your your ego self, which is not negative by any means, we are both, your ego self has a focus. And then your intuition can come funneling down through your wording, uh, whatever you're writing, whatever you're putting up online. My feeling is, is that the more you narrow who you know you're talking to, you will start to feel this download in a way that's going to feel more, more, this word that keeps coming up for me is stable. Because like, because what you are describing that happens to you is that you start to leak energy. And I feel that you, you get there because you have such a broad vision of who you can help. However, when you wanna get the wording down, even in a conversation, if you just start with a single focus of who you are talking to, then the rest will expand and everything that Tyson said will come into play as another layer. D does that make sense? Was I clear enough? It, it does. <clears throat> I don't think I, I in, in my business, I don't think I've limited in, in any way. And that might be part of the problem because I, I don't have limits. It, when it comes to that. And so I haven't really thought of a, a niche or an avatar. I think that's what you're talking about. And well, well what I'm, yes, that's close. But what I'm talking about, because you have such a powerful heart, a, a loving heart, and again, you're so connected to your purpose that it's, it's not so much a limit. It's not so much an avatar as much as it is what you know, you the type of scenario that you love to serve. Because it, it, it does ultimately come down to niching and avatars, et cetera, but I don't wanna come at it with that wording because that's too, like um, Tyson, I think you said, that the old marketing uh, scenarios are, or Deb, I don't know, somebody said, 
<laughs> that the old marketing uh, paradigms are, are crumbling. So what I'm saying is, if you just focus on the kind of results that you love to bring and imagine the person, not even a group of people, but a person that you are talking to that needs your help. I think that that's a good place to start so that you, it's kind of like having some guardrails because you're so creative, you're so expansive and it, it might, we just, it might be an interesting thing to just experiment with. And as far as you being competitive, I do want to, I'd like to just address that if you don't mind. Um, Go ahead. Your, your, what you call competitive, I call clarity of drive. I, I would not ascribe, I mean, this is my definition of competition. I would not layer that on you because you your heart is greater than what we typically think of in terms of competitive what i feel for you is that your drum clear and it is so right in tune in tune with your soul that you just want to get it done and you mm -hmm. want to get it done well and you want to get it done fast and you want to get it done now now Somebody else might consider that to be competitive, but I don't see it that way because your heart is not to do better than somebody else just for the sake of doing better than somebody yeah. else. Your heart is, look, I know what I'm here for. I've had these life experiences. Just put me in the right direction. Let me do my thing and it's gonna be really powerful. So I, I would like to just invite you as somebody who is now starting to really care about you <laughs> to throw out the competitive vision and, and just consider maybe tweaking it a little bit along what I might have said that you might resonate with. Thank you. Hey, Chris, so does anything come to mind? And I see Beatrice, you have your hand up as well. Does, by what Sasha is saying here, do you have anything in particular of a problem <laughs> That this four week course will solve for people is there any particular person you feel called to serve any particular problem that you think it could help with or any particular outcome that it could achieve even if it's just a brainstorm if it's not just like this is going to be it but even just as a brainstorm um, of a specific thing uh, any ideas come up there well, when I, when I got this vision, it was all about frequencies because I was in Maui. It, 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 Maui vibrates at 432, which is the heartbeat of the earth. You, our hearts beat at 432 frequency. When you talk about frequencies, it speaks before you even say anything. It introduces you to the world. And in that, it was like, it's this class is to teach people how to connect more with the frequencies of the earth than to just go on intuition. When you connect your frequencies with your intuition and connect it to the earth, it's a whole nother level of understanding. And so it, it's all about frequencies. It's okay. that understanding that, again, Sasha, thank you. That I did get clarity out of that. Thank you so much. And you are true uh, in your saying that I'm not competitive where I have to compete against other people, but I'm competitive because I am that person will let step through the door and then figure it out as I go. It's just with this, when you're on the frequency, you're at 10,000 feet and all of a sudden you get this vision in your mind that you are supposed to create a four week course and it's to connect humanity to frequencies. And then it ends there and it's like, okay, what's next? Instead of saying, how, how can I serve or how can I, how can I feel through this? I was just like, okay, after 40 years in law enforcement, I'm like, who, what, where, why, and how, and, le and let's try to figure it out and get the, you know, answer those questions. And I think in what you said, Tyson, what Tasha said, what Deb said was very resonating, resonating with me because I'm just, again, I'm ready. I, I, I just flew 18 hours. I've had four hours sleep and I'm like, no, let's get after this. You know, let's just, let's just step through this. And when you said you had this going on and then it was about marketing, I was like, I'm game. If it means staying awake for three more hours, I'm good for that, you know, because I am all about getting the message out there so that people can be healed and helped. 
And that's the message. That's the core message that came up. Does that answer your question, Tyson? Definitely. I think um, that that clarifies exactly sort of your vehicle of connecting frequencies. That's the vehicle. My question is like once people are connecting with the frequencies, what does that do for them? Like, what is it, what is it specifically is, is now their experience? What is some things that they either solve within themselves or now what does their life look like now that they've connected to those frequencies? Like, what is it that they get by using this vehicle? Um, so that can be a bit of a question for you as well. Well, I think the one thing about once people connect and it's like connecting your soul to the earth, to the frequencies, it is all about getting you that inner peace it is about getting you that understanding that you can trust yourself more than you can trust anybody else in life. And when you trust yourself, you build that relationship with you, which is the most important thing. Because when you treat yourself like you treat a stranger, you now have come home to your soul because you matter, you value, you're of worth to yourself. So then you can matter and be of worth to others. Beautiful. We can have a we can have a discussion here of when it comes to um, when it comes to helping people connect in that way with themselves, with the world, having that level of peace. We can consistently dive into the question of what does their life now look like? What's now possible for them? What's the what's a, a, is there any particular tangible experience that they're now able to have or any tangible result they're, any, they're now able to achieve? It may be with their health. It may be with their relationships, their career, with money, with certain things that um, really relate with people. Um, does anything resonate there? And what, what could be? Just uh, the word, and the, yes. Actually, the word that came up was while you were talking was they don't respond to triggers. Mm -hmm. They allow themselves to respond for them and not be triggered by what other people say or do. They don't take it personally. Beautiful. So for example, if you have a program or course helping someone uh, be less triggered around their in-laws <laughs> or be less triggered when it comes to uh, finances and people are like, holy shit, when it comes to finances, I just close up. Or when it comes to my in-laws, I'm just... They say something, I'm like, holy shit. Or like even with, you know, I'm with my husband and he says this one thing and all, all of a sudden I've lost the plot. And when you say, when you give someone those tangible uh, challenges in their life, you're like, hey, what's necessary for you to go from triggered in this scenario to feeling some, feeling some peace so that you can evolve and give, the, give that scenario what it needs for its highest accessing your own frequencies and the frequencies of the planet is the best way to do that is the number one way most easy most effortless way for you to for you to get that outcome and what we're going to do is show you how that how show, show you how to go through those steps of how to make that happen and that's that's exactly what i want to do that's that's the the program yeah now this isn't necessarily your uh, communication. This is just, and your messaging. Yeah. This is just an example of just how to make it a bit more tangible. Uh, Beatrice, you had your hand raised. Is there anything you want to add here? I just yeah. love the fact that when we trust ourselves so much, all of a sudden we can do anything. All of a sudden we matter to ourselves. All of a sudden there isn't anything in life you can't accomplish because. We take so much for granted in ourselves and so much in our inner strength and our abilities that so many people live in fear. So many people live in that notion that, oh, I could never do that. And they can. It's just opening those locks on those, that soul to, to show them how when you get in touch with frequencies, it opens doors personally, professionally, and in your, um, in your career. Yeah. I, Tyson, you're I'm, muted. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I said, I'm on board. Where do I, where do I sign up? <laughs> I, I was going to say, I was going to say, Chris, now you're talking from soul. And when you're talking from soul, it resonates and it instantly resonates with me because, you know, I 
had an amazing experience where I came to Australia and I was protecting a forest and I slept camping out somewhere south of Perth and the tree screamed out for my help during that night. It was heartbreaking. It was so, so powerful and so painful. But I just knew why I came to Australia for that as well, to hear those old trees talking and when you're talking about what you're doing that's what so resonates with me because I parked it I didn't have any space for it because I was building my business and so when you say I have to offer I have this to offer this really really resonates and I so agree with everything that has been said and Sasha has <laughs> said a lot of important things Tyson you've let Chris, through such a beautiful process. I thank you so much for showing us how you do that. And I just want to add one thing, and that is what helps me a lot is when, uh, and that links in with what you're doing when you're talking from soul, is connect with the potential of your clients. When you connect from the heart with the potential of your soul clients, suddenly that love flows in and that blockage just evaporates. It just disappears. So just wanted to add that to, to everything beautiful that has been said. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think there's some key, key things to think about here, Chris. When, uh, if you mold over this after maybe some sleep <laughs> and you have some answers, you have some answers come through in terms of maybe some things that may need to be felt and purged and then also some key questions around all right well what who is the who is that one person who i have as a channeled focus that i can really serve that i feel called to serve knowing that another cool thing another reminder is the niche that you feel called to uh, help is in you right it's in you it really is something that is a calling it's part of your contract it's, it, it really is a part of why you're here so it's not something you need to figure out out there. It's already in you and it's just uncovering that. And so one of the things um, you can ask is say, okay, from this course, from this program, who do I feel called to serve tangibly within my communication? How is it I can communicate this in a way that's clear and in a way that's compelling? Because if you can describe some things that are concrete around their, their problems that you're solving and the outcomes and transformations they're achieving, and you can explain the, the benefits and you can explain um, the real reason, like the ripple effect of where they're at and where they're saying, if you don't solve this problem, here's what your life looks like. If you, if you do solve this problem, here's what your life looks like. And building that, uh, really clearly communicating that compelling message and then saying, here's why the frequencies, aligning with the frequencies of the planet, frequencies of your own energy, your own soul is so important in, in achieving this outcome. Uh, people can be like, man, how do I sign up for this? And then if you can create an offer that feels really good for you, that's a no brainer for them. then that's um, something we can really work on. So in the next couple of days, if you have anything you want to brainstorm on, shoot me a message. I'm happy to get on a, on a quick chat and, um, and go over some things. I think that'll be really fun. But how are you feeling? Do you have any other questions or anything like that before we finish up? No, I don't. This gave me a lot of clarity. Thank you, everybody, for your, your comments and understanding. I'm humbled and honored. I just, like I said, I, when I, I was up there at 10,000 feet, I mean, you're so high. You're, I was, this scared me because my husband's having a hard time breathing and I'm breathing so easy at 10,500 feet on top of this crater. It didn't affect me that way. I could have run even higher if I had to. However, when I started getting this vision, I didn't have any paper and nothing. And then when I get up on the mountain, I started getting more clarity. And it's like, you know, and then I, of course, my comfort zone kicks in and says, who, what, where, why, and how, instead of how does, how do I feel about this? How do I resonate with this instead of that? So I think that's huge, huge in, in this transition for me. So for example, because you've got specific about your vehicle, and about a couple of the challenges, even my mind thinking, man, if you did, you know, weekly calls, or if you did a couple of calls where people just had an experience of feeling what it's like to be in that frequency, 
and and maybe jotting down and sharing with the group what their experience was before and after like these sort of ideas it gives them some momentum help them get some quick wins and see what the possibilities are with accessing this modality the they're going to be they're going to be on board with wanting to know more and and implementing it in their life and sharing it with their you know family members and things like this i think it's really cool for people to be able to solve the patterns of those triggers um yeah it's going to be it'll it'll kick up a lot of momentum as soon as you get the clarity right and as soon as you start to communicate it the one thing that i felt up on that mountain was that it's not what's communicated it's the perception of the comprehension that came up for me and it's not what i say it's how they receive it and so what you just said just there was just you know was a validation i guess i want to say to um what i heard up on that cre that crater beautiful well i don't want to be on zoom for 15 hours straight but thank <laughs> you guys for being here chris once again shoot me a message later on in the uh, in the week if you want some more specific questions but thanks for guys thanks for jumping on and engaging and loving it i'll see you guys same day and same time next week okay thank you thank you thank Bye. you thank Very you much. take care Bye.